Critics of a new law say that in Louisiana schools, the line between church and state is getting blurred. The Republican governor just signed a law making Louisiana the first state in the country to require the Ten Commandments be posted in every public school classroom from kindergarten through state funded universities. The law specifies the commandments must be displayed on a poster or framed document that's at least 11 by 14 inches and in quote large, easily readable font. Opponents have now vowed to sue and at least one high school teacher is saying he will defy that law, calling it nonsense. It's just foolish legislation. I mean, what's going to happen? A third grader is going to walk in a classroom and see thou shall not commit adultery on the wall and say, well, you know, I was really planning on committing adultery today, but um, since I read that on the wall, now I'm not going to do it. It's just nonsense. We have real issues. And Joining me now to discuss is one of the co-authors of House Bill 71, Louisiana State Representative Lauren Ventrella. State Representative, thank you so much for being with us to share your perspective. Does the bill specify what kind of penalty teachers like that will face? Uh, there's there's not any penalty un under the law. It's just a, a requirement that the classrooms should post what we know and believe is the moral fabric, the moral fiber of our country that should be on public display that the school children should have the opportunity to read and be exposed to. So when you talk about the, the moral fiber of our country, you realize that this country is... Uh, an amalgamation of cultures, right, and, and different faiths. And even within Christianity, people don't interpret those commandments the same way. Well, what's important about this bill and what's important to remember about this country is that whether we like it or not, Moses is in the Supreme Court of the United States. The Ten Commandments are in the Supreme Court of the United States. Moses is on the law in Congress. This is part and ingrained in our nation. This is a historical document that's important in Louisiana because in Louisiana, we believe in faith, family, and freedom. And that is why I voted in favor of this bill. Sure, but you also recognize that the constitution of this country, its founding document, doesn't include the word God or Jesus or Christianity. And that's for a reason because the founding fathers founded this country as a secular one. You, you don't Boris, see that? I bet you, I bet you, I bet you CNN pays you a lot of money. And I bet you got a bunch what of dollars. What does this have to do with wall? the network that I work for or what I'm getting paid? Don't make this about that. Answer the question. Why did the Boris, founding fathers Boris, not include God in the Constitution if they wanted this country me, to be the way that you see it? Let, let me finish my statement. And Answer wallet, the question and don't make this about me. In, in God we trust, we'll make it about me. I got a dollar bill in my wallet. In God we trust is written on that dollar. It is not forcing anybody to believe one viewpoint. It's merely posting a historical reference on the wall for students to read and interpret it if they choose. But fundamentally, you understand that there's a separation between church and state and that if you're a student at a school say you're Muslim or, or Hindu or, or atheist, having that on the wall, doesn't that endorse a specific set of beliefs? Absolutely not. It is a historical document. Again, but, the but there are historical documents, nation. there are historical documents that actually this law authorizes to be displayed in classrooms like uh, the Mayflower Compact, the Declaration of Independence and others but this one is specifically religious and, and there's a difference there. I mean, th that seems pretty clear that there's a difference between a random historical document and one that endorses a very specific view of a very specific denomination within a religion. I, I don't agree with you that this is a random historical document. This is a very- I didn't very say it was random, but there, there are others- this is a there, Go ahead. This is a very valuable document. Look, this nation has gotten out of hand with crime, with the bad negative things that are going on. Why is it so preposterous that we would want our students to have the option to have some good principles instilled in them? If they but, don't hear it at home, 
Let them I, read it in the classroom. It's I, different I didn't, than the I, Mayflower, Mayflower Compact, which is mentioned in the document as well. I don't understand why this is so preposterous and that litigation is being is being uh, threatened. It, it doesn't scare us in the state of Louisiana. We say bring it on. Because if someone has a home in which they choose to believe something different, which is welcome in this country, it's literally why people fled to come here to found this country to begin with then they should be allowed to. And, and it, it's not really an option if you're requiring it to be put up in the wall of a classroom. What do you say to the parents of students or even teachers who don't share the, your religious views? I, I, don't look at it. What would you say if your child had to go to a classroom in which the five pillars of Islam were required to be on the wall? How would you feel? Again, this is not about the five pillars of Islam. This bill specifically states the Ten Commandments. It is a historical sure, but I'm, document. I'm, I'm presenting you with a hypothetical that would help you put yourself in the shoes of someone you may not understand and their point of view. How would you feel if you Lord, walked into I, a classroom and something you didn't believe in was required to be on the wall? You can answer I, that question. I, I appreciate you. I, I cannot sit here and gather and fathom what uh, you could give me a thousand hypotheticals. But again, this specific bill applies to this specific text, the Quran or Islam. That is a very broad statement. We're specifically talking about a limited text on, mind you, a piece of paper that's not much bigger than a legal sheet of paper. Some kids might even need a magnifying glass to read all of this. This is not so preposterous that we're, we're we're somehow sanctioning and forcing religion down people's throat. I've, I've heard the comments and it's, it's just ridiculous. Uh, I mean, a requirement is a requirement, right? Your law mandates a specific version of the commandments be posted. Here is one of them. I want to share it with our viewers. It says, quote, thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his cattle, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. I'm wondering why this specific version of the commandments was selected. So the reason why for that is because it is the most historical reference. It is one of the original translations into the English language and to preserve the actual history of the document, uh, the, the drafters of the legislation felt that it was very important to maintain that historical context and that language that portrays it in the best historical light possible. I, I'm in no way diminishing anyone's beliefs. I, I don't think that my personal beliefs are important to this story. But I, I do have to point out and, and ask you about the fact that religious scholars don't even agree who wrote the Ten Commandments, where or when they were written. Does that not give you pause in any way that, that this comes from a religious document and not from something that's based in, in secular agreement or, or in, in a doctrine that a group of people have come to accept something like the Constitution? Look. Religious scholars may not agree, but I'm going to tell you right now, Louisiana in both houses agreed, and we passed this legislation. Look, Louisiana is not California or New York. It may make people uncomfortable in other states, but in this legislature this year, it was a resounding acceptance of this legislation, and that's what's most important. What should a teacher tell a kindergartner who asks what adultery is? Well, the, the, the teacher should be able to have an appropriate response, which is to tell them, look, guys, this is a historical document that's posted on the wall to remind everyone of good morals, good principles. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not lie. These are important things. I think that in the state of Louisiana, we have echoed a strong voice that we believe that faith is a very important part of history and the founding of this nation. Again, we've got it posted in historical buildings all over the place. I don't understand why this is such a shock factor to the nation uh, that we would somehow do this. I'm proud that in the state of Louisiana, we're leading the charge on this, and I am proud to press the button in favor of that bill. I guess the argument is that you could teach morals without getting into religion. I have one last question. State Representative, will you come back when this gets taken up at the Supreme Court? I'd be more than happy to have this conversation with you again, Boris. Uh, may, maybe I'll get some of those dollar bills in my pocket one day like you on CNN so oh, I can remind myself. I, and God. I, I, wish, I wish you would have made it personal because it's not. It's about the story. It's not about me and it's not about the amount of money in my wallet. State Representative Lauren Ventrella, no. I very much appreciate your time. Thanks for being with us.
Thank you, Boris. I appreciate you.